Hello and welcome to part 5 of the Ticker Game and Visual Scripting Tutorial. I have a little surprise because I already got the first animation for the game. I have here the Necromancer which is gonna be in the center of the screen. Uh, it's gonna be replacing my amazing drawing but okay. When you have an animation with a lot of uh, frames like I have here, what you can do is create a new node which is going to be an animated sprite. Uh, this will take a lot of textures and animate them. Uh, when you create it, you have here a warning because we don't have any frame or any animation selected. So let's go ahead and create a new sprite frames. Now, when you create it, you click it and it opens a new menu here with all the frames that you want inside this node. I'm going to move all these sprites to my project folder. And I drag the folder here. Let's create a new one, which is sprites. And inside sprites, a new folder. Necromancer. Okay. Let's paste this animation here. When you add files into your project folder and you select cut out, it will import all the assets that you have there and you will be able to use them. Here I have all the frames, so I select them all, press shift to select them all and I drag and drop them to the animation. So now we have all the frames and here in the animation node, which is selected, I can press on playing and you will see the animation playing in game. Uh, I want to I want it to be a little bit faster. You can modify the speed here. Let's go with 20 maybe. Maybe it's too much. 15. Yeah, 15 seems about right. I see that there are like a few frames maybe extra at the end. Uh, you, you can order the frames here and, and delete them, move them. See if I remove the last one, I select this one and press here. Maybe another one. Yeah, this seems more smooth. Okay, I can place it in the middle of the screen. And yeah, maybe a little bit slower. Let's go with 10. Mm, 12. Yeah, 12 seems about right. Okay, let's save it. Let's try it out. And yeah, we are starting to have a game. I want to have different animations for this, but I need to ask my brother to make them. <laughs> if you want to check, he has a, a YouTube channel. You can check the link in the description. It's really, really, really interesting. You should check it out. Next is going to be translating some of the code that we have on the game. I want to do a quick demonstration of how it will look like to translate some existing visual scripting code into just regular script. So since the main script, I feel it's the most basic one, I'm gonna do that one right now. It only has three variables and two functions. So let's create a new script here maybe yeah right click new script and let's create the new script but instead of selecting the visual script let's go with gd script new script that gd okay let's rename it sorry let's call it main now we have main gd main vs okay so let's open it we can delete everything and start with the first one this one on button pressed this is a signal so we need to connect the signal again to this script and to do that i'm going to select the main node which currently has the main script that vs selected you can either press here and select a new one which will delete it or load a new script and select the new main.gd now that we have the main.gd, we select the button, which was this one, uh, the one that when you press it, it gets one more. 
and here's the signal we had. Let's disconnect it and select it again, connect again to the main node. So now inside this main script, we have the button press, which is the same as this function. What else do we need? We need the process function. The process function is a, a function that you have pre-made. You don't have to connect any signal to it. So we can just type it, func underscore process delta. Okay. So we have both functions now. And how many variables we have? We have three variables, two ints and a float. Auto clicker, count, and second. So we create here var auto clicker, which are the values 0, 0, and 0 0.01. I don't think we're using the seconds anymore, right? This is from something we already deleted. So we're not going to move that one to the new one. So we are using count. So let's go and count. Okay. Let's check more properties here. Are they an exported variable? No, they're not. And count. Yes, count it is exported. Let's see. How, how do you export a variable here in the same way that you click there? Remember, export variables are the ones that you can edit here from the inspector. To export a variable, you just type export in front of it, and that's it. You don't need to do anything else. That way, when we select count, we see here that it's zero. Well, now, since I'm using visual scripting in other places, and I feel like I'm getting the, the count, yes, on, the, on a different scene, I'm not sure if I if this node will work. Uh, if it doesn't work, we're going to have to also translate all of this. But first, let's continue with this translation. What we did in the process function was updating the label, this label, which is the one that displays how many points we already have. So we need to get the count, make it a string, and set the text of that node. To do that, we can use the get underscore node and type what node we want to select. This case is the label one, or we can use the dollar sign and type the name of the node that we want. Now, the function to set the text is called the same as in visual scripting, set text. But here is all in lowercase, like this. Or you can even set the variable text and equals whatever you like. In this case, we want to transform the count. Remember, it was like a number. We want to make it a string. We do as str and count, which is the name of the variable we want to translate. So this line would be doing the same as all these three boxes in visual scripting. Now for on button press, what we did was, let's see, we add one and we updated the label as well. We don't really need to do this because updating the label is something we do on every step of the process. Like this function will be running constantly as the game is running. So we can just on button press count plus equals. This will add to the existing value of one. And that's it. That would be the same functionality we had in visual scripting, but with regular GD script. Let's save it. Let's try it out. I'm sure it's not going to work. Oh, well, yeah, it is working. I'm not sure if the references are working. Yes, references seem to keep working. Well, that's good news because that means that you can translate only part of your program and it will still be working. Now, let's go and close this visual script. We don't need it anymore. Let's delete it to make sure 
we don't have any any additional file around and we need to translate the auto clickers this seems a bit more complicated but in reality is quite simple we should be able to do this in a couple lines of code let's see what we have in total we have a uh, few variables and three functions so let's start with the same let's open up the auto clicker here we have it the button the labels and everything let's remove the script we don't want it anymore you can press here on clear or the button there now that we don't have the script we create a new one it's going to be a gd script auto clicker scene dot gd we create it we delete everything so now we need to connect the signals we have one signal for the timer one signal for the button let's disconnect it and connect it again to the auto clickers node and for the timer the timeout function let's disconnect it and connect it again to the main node okay we also have the process function let's create it func process delta pass okay now variables we have the amount increment price price string and UPS. I remember I wanted to replace this price string stuff, so I'm not gonna copy that one. Let's do amount, increment, price, and apps. Amount, increment, price, and apps, which was units per second, I guess. Yeah, amount is zero, then two, then five, then one. Zero, two, five and zero again i guess units per second one okay now which of these variables were being exported amount no increment no price it's been exported and units per seconds are exported so okay these are all exported now in the process function we have all these things timer timeout okay and button press let's start with the timeout let's see what do we have here on timeout we get the count we get the units per second we multiply them okay so amounts per units per second and we set it to count so we know that we want to set count so on term timeout count will be at sql and this count is the one that we have on the root node on the main scene so get the tree and then get node and the name of that node is main with capital letters okay let's see if this is working let's print it out oh i forgot about here we also need to get root okay this should be it, right let's try it out again yeah yeah it's it's working now it should be one yes okay so we can actually store all this reference in a variable so we don't have to call it every time let's create a new variable which is going to be main node and in in a new function which is going to be called at the beginning of the game which is ready I'm going to assign the main node to this. 
So now I can reference the main node by just using main node that count. This is, I feel, the only thing that it's a bit more complicated than the drag and drop that we did before to get the count variable. But if you know a better way of doing it, please leave a comment. It's not as complicated as having all that mess of boxes around. Uh, let's continue. We already have the count, so we needed to get the amount and the units per second. Amount multiplied per units per second and add it to the count that we have. So instead of just saying this is going to be equal, we just want to add it, uh, amount with a T. Okay. So this line is basically doing all this. And this line is kind of a way of doing this. And yeah, you see how easy it is to do something like this with text. Now with the button press, let's see what we have here. Okay, let's go part by part. We start the program here, we get a condition. Okay, what is the condition? If the price is bigger or equal than the, the amount, the count that we have on the program. So if the price is bigger or equal than the main node count. So we already have all this covered. Let's see if it is true, we add, no, we subtract the price. So yeah, in the main node count minus equal price. Okay. So we have this done. Then we continue to set amount. So we get the amount and we add one. Okay. So amount, we add one. So what we're doing with this two. Now we set the text. Okay. It's going to be this text, right? Or yeah, units per second or this label. Uh, okay. Okay, we set the text, the label text. Okay. So remember the dollar sign label text is going to be the amount. Okay, pretty simple. We transform it to a string and we update that label. What else do we do here? We continue to price. Now we get the amount and the increment and we multiply it together. So price, we get the amount multiplied per the increment. And that result, we multiply it by the price. Okay, so let's add some parentheses. So we know that this is going to be multiplied by the price. And that's going to be the new price. Okay, so this should be all done. Um, I hope I didn't make any mistake, but this seems about right. We check if the price is bigger or equal than the currency that we have. We subtract it. We add that we have a new one. We update the label to display that we already have one. And we augment the price by multiplying how many we have by the increment and by the price. So we already have button press, timer timeout, and now let's go for process. Let's see what we did here in process. Okay, we have a first 
first a conditional to set disable the button or not. Okay, what are we checking? We're checking the count, if the count is bigger or equal than the price. So let's go. If the main node count is bigger or equal than the price, we select the button and disable is equal to false because that means that we have money to buy it and we want to make the button available. Then, if it's not, we disable it. So else button disable it true. Okay. We have all this part ready. All this. Yep. Goodbye. Now we need to set the text. Which text? Let's see. The price text we are modifying. So we get the string. We get the. Oh, th this was the, the weird part that we, we can make it better. But okay. Uh, let's see. We set the price was still one right yeah okay so we select the price node which is the label we set the text equal to price equal space and now we add the price value okay after updating the price we update the units per second which is the HP contact value. Okay, this node. Now, H post here. For container value text equal to the UPS, right? Yes, UPS. Units per second. And that is the process function there. I don't think there's anything else I should be updating, right? Let's save it. Let's open this main scene. Let's save it again. I'm not sure if these values are being... Yeah, yeah, okay. This is the script. Let's remove this one just in case. I don't want to have it lingering around. Autoclickers.bs. Delete. And the moment of truth. Let's try it out. Okay, we have here value. Yeah, I forgot to transform this into a string. My bad. Okay, <laughs> let's go again. And yeah, we have different prices. Let's see. When I, ha when I have this is I cannot buy it. If I have this, the price went up. I get, I'm getting one unit per second. Yeah. Oh, I cannot buy this one. Okay, so there are some problems here and there that I must fix. The first one is that the prices are not updating properly and maybe this number is not being counted. Let's see what I did wrong. Let's go again through all of it. Let's see. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, here. I, I'm checking if the price is bigger than the amount we have. This should be like here. Like if the count is bigger than the price of this item itself. Okay, this should fix everything. <laughs> let's go. And let's buy this one. Okay, we're generating units five units per second. Now I can buy all the upgrades. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. So now we have the program with no visual scripting. So for from now on, this is going to be only working with GD script. And I'm going to make, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep making many, many more videos because my brother is very busy and the rest for this game would be adding more graphics and effects things like that and i need him to make these amazing graphics that we have here 
but on my next video I think I can make a better style for the buttons like adding a custom font um designing it a little bit better so when you know like the style of the buttons and you know like how the information is laid out i think i can make a quick update on that okay th that's it for today if you want to help me make more of these videos there's a link to my patreon in the description and i want to really thank my patreons for everything you guys are amazing and for everyone that has been asking questions in the comments or on Twitter or Reddit, please keep them coming. I'd like to know what you guys want to learn. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. Bye.